come to a couple of, um, I'm just telling Zoom that I understand that this, this is going to be recorded. Uh, before we come to, uh, to sing a couple of so, uh, worship songs, I was just thinking about how we prepare ourselves for things. And sometimes, I'm sure this happens to all of you sometimes, uh, if you have to go to the shop in, down the street to get maybe one or two things, uh, I, I sort of did that last yesterday afternoon. And sometimes, you know, like it's a cold day and you're sort of, it's Saturday and you're sort of walking around in your tracksuit and then you're a bit lazy to, to get changed, you know. So sometimes I think, oh, I'll just go as I am. And then, you know, sometimes I have gone in my Ugg boots or, you know, whatever. But sometimes I think, oh, no, I won't. I'll, you know, I'll take my tracksuit off and put on a, you know, a pair of jeans or something. And, and that's just to go into town because sometimes you sort of feel like you don't want to be, you know, don't, don't want to look, uh, I don't know, look like an idiot or a bogan or whatever. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Um, but then I was thinking about how do we prepare? How do we prepare to come into God's presence? And there's a sense in which we, because we say, and I hope that we, we believe, that God's present with us all the time. So when we come and we gather together with other people who worship, there's a sense in which, well, God's already present with me. But there is a kind of preparation, isn't there? I mean, we, we sort of all kind of understand that. We don't want to just come into the presence of God. We don't want to prepare to meet God in a kind of a, a sort of um, a slack sort of lackadaisical way. You know, and it's funny because... In this time of Zoom services and all that sort of thing, we, we can do lots of things very informally, can't we? Like, you know, we can come and do things on, in our pyjamas and we can be eating our breakfast and all that sort of thing. So that kind of lends itself to being so casual that, there's, that that might not help us in really knowing what we're doing when we come into God's presence. So one of the things that is really helpful, and we've been doing this for years and years, is that we come and sing, and sometimes in our singing even, uh, we sort of get, helps us to tune in to God and, and you know, in our, in, our, in our prayers and, you know, we focus on things and we start to focus because what really matters, it's not about all those outside things, is it? It's not the externals, it's what's in our hearts and God sees our hearts. So as we come to sing these um, first couple of songs, uh, I, I hope that we come with a sense of we are meeting with God, and these songs have, have great words that help us to do that. So let's, uh, well, if you want to stand or if you want to sit down, we're going to start with Hear Our Praises, and then the next song is King of Kings. Let's sing. <laughs> Don't be held with diamonds, baby. May our streets be filled with joy. May justice run to Jesus. As the people turn to pray. The last day to my our praise and rise to the Lord. the nations. Here I we walk before the cross. May your glory fill the world as the water of the sea. 
God, we do want that your praise and your glory fills the whole earth. Lord, that is true already, but we want it to become more evident in our world. But, Lord, we know that it starts uh, in our hearts. And so today, as we meet together for this time, uh, we want your glory to be preeminent in our hearts. And, Father, instruct us and help us and help us to listen uh, as we tune in to you and what you want, not just for us alone, though, but for us as a church. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's keep singing uh, as we sing King of Kings. In the darkness we were waiting without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes. Filled with the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word, from a throne of endless glory, to a cradle in the dirt. God of glory, magic Steve, praise forever to the King of Kings. You did not despise the cross, or even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for us, thank you, darling. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of Kings. And on the night you rose, all of the pain down its spread, till the stone was moved forward for the land conquered death. 
And the dead was on their tombs, and the angels stood in awe, for the souls of all who come to the Father are restored. Then the Spirit lit the flame, now this gospel truth of all shall not deal, shall not faint, his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free, for the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Praise the Father, Praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings, praise forever to the King of kings. Please be seated. We come uh, to a just a time of uh, sharing some news, uh, just uh, general sort of announcements, and there are a couple of things happening. So the first thing is uh, a lot of people you know that Barry Regan, a um, uh, good and loved friend here, he's in hospital in Ballarat. He had a bit of a uh, a bad turn on Wednesday night. And he's in hospital. He's still being checked over. Um, and we have a card here. A couple of people have already signed it for Barry, which uh, someone will be delivering on on Wednesday uh, to him personally. So, um, if you could just uh, sign, you know, put your wishes down here for Barry, that would be great, uh, and let him know that he's been thought of and prayed about. Uh, so yeah. Grab that later. The other thing to know, so is there anything more to know about the church meeting next next week, Tim? Um, um, no. Uh, it's just a reminder for reports. It's, uh, people haven't got given reports to you yeah, yet. Oh, the time of the meeting? So, um, yeah, it is. So will we, will we just go straight into the meeting next week? Or? Well, maybe people can Zoom. Uh, going to be the two one meeting in the time of the year, so would one o'clock be too long? No, I, I think one o'clock would be probably a good time. Yeah. So, um, yeah, let's let's do one o'clock. Yeah, one o'clock church meeting next week. So that's slightly different from the way that we've done it before. Uh, one o'clock church meeting, but it's an important meeting. Uh, there's a number of important things there, and we will be, because... Um, just the way that we gather, there's, there's all sorts of things changing at the moment. So we'll be talking about that at the church meeting too. So that, that would be one important thing. Uh, but there's a couple of other things that we'll be um, talking about. And uh, please be in prayer for the church meeting and, um, um, yeah, for the, for the way that we, uh, you know, run our, our church, especially in the next few months. So we, one of the things that has um, been the, the leaders have become aware of, and uh, there's all sorts of reasons for this, but when we uh, were in the thick of COVID, we got, well, like lots of people did, we got help from the government uh, to get us through, and that was a really great help. But um, now we don't get that help, like most people are not getting that help. And uh, what we've sort of realised is that um, our offerings and, and so on have sort of been struggling a little bit. Um, and uh, 
it, it's been quite a while since we've looked at this, but I just want to go quickly through uh, just our attitude to, to tithing here. So in the Old Testament, the tithe, one, one, uh, one tenth of your income was like an expectation, but it was an expectation with blessing. But in the New Testament, which is what basically we, we operate under New Testament principles, uh, so the New Testament doesn't ask for 10%, uh, but some people would use the Old Testament as a guide and say that 10% is the minimum of what we should give back to God. In the New Testament, Paul says, on the first day of each week, you should each put aside a portion of the money you have earned. Don't wait until I get there, because Paul was uh, collecting for a specific purpose in this case, and then try to collect it all, all at once. Uh, so he's saying, ha have, a, have a bit of a plan. And so the main things that are there in the New Testament is that um, what we give to God is an individual thing. It's also a planned thing. We don't do it in a random way, and it's also a regular thing. And then uh, Paul also says, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Um, and then ways to give, well, um, we, we still, um, we can give by cash, and that's why we have the offering plates there, and you feel free if anyone wants to put your money in the plate today. We've also got a basket for the home of the open heart. That's for your kind of loose change that you can put in there. Uh, but you can also give through, uh, and a number of people here have started giving through uh, direct debit, and we have a bank account. Uh, we can make those account details available to you if you want to give by direct debit. It helps the planning a lot to be able to do it that way. So thank you. That's basically all we need to do. And please pray that uh, God will provide for our needs through his people uh, so that the, the work of this church can continue into the future. Thanks, Scott. So the next, um, we, we're going to have a time of prayer in a moment, but we're going to do it after this song uh, that we're going to sing. And this is an old song, uh, and it's like it's an invitation to the Holy Spirit to come into our midst. Now, this is not like, it's not like saying the Holy Spirit isn't here because uh, Christians would believe that if you have uh, asked Jesus to, to come and take control of your life, that the Spirit comes to us at that time. But this is really important because the song reminds us that, that we can get a little bit, we need to be alert to what the Spirit wants to do in our lives. And this is an invitation to say, come and do a fresh work in us. Um, in Ezekiel, there's a kind of, um, there's a, this, uh, in Ezekiel 37, there's this great little account where uh, Ezekiel sees these dry bones. And uh, long story short, God says to him, breathe into those dry bones. It's like he breathes a spirit into those dry bones and he makes them alive. And God says, we, when what Ezekiel saw was like people that looked like dry bones, and it's God that gives them life. And what we want, we don't want a dry bone church. We want a church that's full of the life of the spirit. So this song is basically inviting that life into our church. So let's sing with that in mind. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come, come, 
Holy Spirit, come, come to us. Holy Spirit, fall. Holy Spirit, fall. French us with your love, fill my mind with this, Holy Spirit, fall, oh, fall on us. Holy Spirit, flow. Spirit, flow. Lead us in your will and power to proclaim Holy Spirit flow through our Thank you. Uh, if we could have that next slide, please, Scott. So we're going to uh, our focus in prayer. Um, um, we're going to have a time of open prayer now, um, but I would like us to begin uh, with a focus on uh, the missionaries that we support uh, in this church, and uh, I hope we can see that clearly enough. So. Just a very quick summary. Uh, Paul and Penny over there in Thailand, uh, Matt and Shannon Anderson and their children in the Northern Territory, Lyle Hutchinson in Canberra with YWAM, and uh, Vickers with Operation Mobilization in, Ge oh, in Germany. And um, this is that we can pray openly. And those on Zoom, you can join in on that because uh, I'm assured that we this will work. So if you pray, we will hear you. And if we pray, you'll hear us. So I would like us to begin by praying for our missionaries and not generally. So I would like if each of those missionaries could be mentioned, even if it's a one-sentence prayer, could be mentioned individually. So if you pray for, for someone, just pray for one of those families and someone else can pray for someone else. When we pray for the missionaries, we, then we just open it up to, to prayer as we would normally. So let's, uh, let's pray, and then I'll close in a little while. Well, we do thank you and praise you for the work that... Um, Paul and Penny have done in Thailand with the um, children. <clears throat> and Father, you know just um, how much of their lives they put into that. And we praise you and thank you for them. We pray that uh, as they go on, they're getting older, Lord, and there needs to be uh, someone more people are uh, interested in doing that work over there. And I pray that you'll be speaking to the hearts of those that you want to go there. But we do thank you for all that you really continue to come to um, open the home of the open heart and, uh, and have been there for such a long time. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Father, we pray for the Vicar family. We rejoice with them, with their new baby. 
And uh, father, we pray for them as a family as they adjust to this new baby in their home and uh, sometimes with the fatigue that can and the demands that go along with that. And we pray for your continued blessing in that area. And father, we pray for them too as they prepare for this summit in November, um, preparing for a sports summit. Thank you for the many opportunities that they've had with leaders from all around Europe who have doing in, um, intentional sort of ministry through sport. And we pray for them as they um, seek to um, encourage them and build them up and share with one another and get new ideas and new, um, I guess, tools for ministry um, through sport. We pray that you'll continue to bless them and watch over and protect them in Jesus' name. Okay. I'll pray for Lyle because he, he rang me yesterday. Lord, uh, we thank you that uh, Lyle and the YWAM crew at Canberra have got through this time of lockdown well and have been able to actually uh, change uh, the way they do the food pantry and still help people in the community. And uh, uh, Lyle was celebrating the fact that they were able to do that. But Lord, he rang because he wanted us. He was just given this uh, 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 task, uh, which has only come in the last week or so, of uh, teaching some people in a Bible college in Fiji by Zoom, uh, through Zoom next week, on four days next week. They're just a few hours a, a day. And he wanted us to be praying for him. So we do ask for his preparation, Lord. He's... Uh, He's teaching on the book of Genesis, so that's a big book. And uh, we just pray that he'll be able to bring those uh, main things together and help and to pitch it at the right level for these Fijian students that he will be teaching. So we ask for your empowering, Lord, and thanks, Lord, that uh, Lord, he, one of the, the things that he's in YVAM for is to be teaching, and he hasn't done a lot of that in the last year. So he's pretty excited about this. So we ask that you will work through him. Uh, and, and that'll be a real blessing and real great instruction for those Bible students that he's teaching next week. Amen. So if somebody could pray for Matt and Shannon Anderson in the Northern Territory. Even if you don't know specifics, uh, there's a, just a one thing there up on the screen. If you just want to just bring them before God in a quick sentence or two. Heavenly Father, we just bring the Anderson family before you, Lord. And we pray that you will help them to reach out to those who are surrounding communities with your love. We pray, Lord, that they will open the hearts of many Indigenous people as they work with them. And we thank you, Lord, that they have given up their time in their former home and um, taken up your role. Um, with the people in Northern Territory. Lord, we thank you for their uh, and for Tyler's work. And we pray that you will just bless them and their children in the mighty way. Amen. And maybe we just continue praying now in open prayer, but can I invite you to just um, pray as loud as you can and uh, because we're sharing this together with people on Zoom and also... Um, uh, let's keep our prayers brief. Father, we do pray for um, Barry uh, in the situation he's in at the moment. Father, you, you will, we know that you will guide the doctors to um, the problem that um, is in Barry's um, body. We, we know that you you know all and that you will guide them and help him, Lord, to get better. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Father, we bring you for you the members meeting next week. Um, we thank you for our leadership and thank you for the work that you'll be putting in to keeping things going for us as a church. And, Decisions that need to be made. Lord, as we meet together next week, let's pray that for everyone, our desire will be to allow your Holy Spirit to lead 
to guide and that we will be hearing your word to us and what needs the decisions that need to be made that Lord they would be made um with your input your influence in the direction that you want us to go as a church. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, I bring to you my daughter Bronwyn, who had a very bad asthma attack during the night. Lord, I pray that mm. your hand will be upon her. Mm. Keep her safe, Lord, as she knows that um, there has been healing put out for asthma at times. And I just pray that you will just um, keep her safe in every way. Mm. Father, I pray to you that um, Cash. As she goes into hospital on Wednesday for her surgery, Lord, I pray that um, it will go ahead as planned and for um, just, a, just um, that everything will go well during the operation and for a good recovery. And Lord, I pray too for both Barry and Cashel. It's hard being in hospital without family members um, being there to support. And so I pray that you would just help them to know that you are present with them in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I just pray for the year 12 to so start their plans this week. Mm. That they will know your presence, particularly that they will do the work that they need to to mm -hmm. uh, sit with confidence and mm -hmm. to fade on do those exams. Mm -hmm. And more than that, they will just be very aware of your presence with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lord, I pray for our fellowship, our brothers and sisters who gather together at Baker's Marsh that, Lord, you will bless each and every one of them wherever they are, that you will hold us together by your love, by your compassion. And, Lord, I just pray for those who, who can't meet together, that, Lord, you will be, meet with them yourself and bring, them, bring us all back together eventually to meet together in person. I just pray your blessing upon Jeremy and Scott and uh, that you will give them your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, and your blessing, Lord, and just keep them safe. Thank you, Father. Father, we want to thank you uh, for the pastoral search committee and uh, David, who's um, sort of moderating or chairing that group. And we pray for them as they meet uh, during this week. We pray for their ongoing deliberations, Lord, about uh, who we are as a church and what sort of pastor we want to call. And Lord, um, we just uh, we we know that that's a really responsible task. We pray for uh, all the information that they need to be uh, at their grasp, uh, so that they can uh, make right decisions and uh, that they would know your help and the help of your spirit uh, leading in that process too. Father, we do pray for um, our, our nation, uh, Lord, as we go into a more uh, sort of kind of like a normal situation, although it doesn't seem uh, normal compared to what it was two years ago. But, Lord, we, we know that there are still, Lord, we know that the, the people are, still going to catch the COVID virus, and we know that there are precautions that need to be taken. We, we realise, Lord, that uh, with the freedom comes probably uh, a kind of a, a, a sort of a kind of more liberal uh, attitudes to, to what we should do. So we just ask for, for safety and for wise heads to prevail, Lord, as we go into this next phase. So we just want to pray for our nation. Uh, and, and, Lord, we pray that in the midst of this all, um, that your people all over this nation will be able to focus on the things that matter to you. And, Lord, what matters to you is that you love this world, that you died for this world, and so we want to also love this world, be in connection with this world, and we don't want to get sidetracked, Lord, by other things. So lead us in all that we do in these next months. In Jesus' name, amen. So we are ready now for the message. So I'm going to invite Scott up here. Thank you, Scott.
No worries. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks for uh, leading this morning. Hopefully everyone can hear okay. Uh, apologies for the start. You know, we tried a few different things. It kind of reminds me, even, even as we're going sort of through, um, you know, this easing of lockdowns, everyone's celebrating freedom days and all these sort of things. You know, when you're set up for a party, right, you set up for a party and all the food needs to go in a specific spot, all the chairs need to go in a specific spot, but by the end of the party, you don't care. And if there's extra food that comes out, it can go on a different spot. The drinks that you set up onto a particular table, you know, no, that's all right. The bottle of drink can be on the table with the food. It can be down on a little coffee table somewhere. It's, yeah, who cares by the end of it? That kind of feels like the situation we're in at the moment. We sort of go, oh, all this planning, that's all good. But now, now that the sort of things have rolled on, it doesn't really matter what's going on. It doesn't matter that uh, we, we start lockdown. I was reading this morning in the paper. We started the whole lockdown, what was it, seven or eight, nine, ten weeks ago with eight cases. We ended the lockdown with 2,220-odd cases. So that kind of doesn't really make a lot of sense, but it is that party that goes, oh, it doesn't matter where the dream Just chuck them over on the table over there. Let's just continue on. Let's just continue on. So that... That's also all the preparations that we have here and all the things that get put in place. We sort of go, ah, just that. Uh, so thank you for everyone's comments. Um, uh, thank you for your concern. You couldn't see Jeremy properly, so we came and uh, fixed up the, the video here to see us. The reason I did that, I'll tell you the reason I did that and why there's a camera over there for those that are on Zoom, is because um, these legs aren't made for standing still. And so I knew, <laughs> I knew... So because I'm preaching, I move around a lot. And I apologise for those that are watching this on the, the big screen here. I move around a lot. These legs don't stand still. Uh, I would say they're made for dancing, but they're not made for dancing. They're just not made for sitting still, except for at about 8.30 at night when they don't want to move anymore. That's it. It's finished. The legs have done. The recliner goes up and I stay still for about an hour or two hours. But anyway, so hopefully uh, all, is, all is okay and all is well. But thank you for your concern. Jeremy is a very handsome man, so we need to be able to see him uh, <laughs> very clearly as well. Uh, I could say the same about me, but it wouldn't be true. Last week, last week, um, we did look at, uh, at in the book of Acts, uh, at um, the the story of, of journeys and people that we meet and, and prisons that we might face. And we looked at... Uh, at the journey of, of Paul meeting Timothy along the journey and then uh, also going and, and discovering um, a, an area where they went to go and pray and then finding and, and meeting Lydia, who, uh, whilst Paul uh, was in prison and prayed for them and, and were up, and once they came out, came back to her place and they, they encouraged one another. And these are the people that you meet along the way, the journeys that were had, and these people that had travelled so far to get to the places where they were interacting with each other. The path we sort of discovered is set out for us, and it's amazing to think back at all of the things that, uh, that we experience and that, that bring us to a certain point. The path is set out. We shift in different directions based on experience and the people we meet and the places that we go. So with that in mind, I'm going to take a step back a little bit. And we set out on a path and the journey, but what goes into the planning? What is the preparation that goes into us taking that journey? What are the what is the what preparations go into place for us to meet the people that we meet? There's a uh, I was hoping to have it up. It's a little bit long, um, and it was a little bit difficult to start to start sharing it on there. But I don't know if you've seen a clip. Um, um, from Mr. Bean, Mr. Bean clip where he prepares himself to meet the Queen in a lineup. So the Queen's going along, and here's Mr. Bean in the lineup, getting himself all ready and preparing himself to meet the Queen. And he checks his breath. <sighs> yeah, and all he finds it's, it's pretty awful. So he gets his little spray out and he sprays it into his mouth, and it's nice and clean. And then he pretends and prepares himself for the handshake that's going to be made. So he goes, Yeah. Oh, he wonders, well, should I bow at the same time? So he does the handshake and does the little bow and all that sort of thing. He prepares himself to meet this special person in his world. And by the time that 
the Queen gets to Mr Bean at this point in time. He's prepared all of these different things, his breath, his handshake, his bow. He ends up going, well, just before she gets there, he goes, shake, 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 bow, like projects his breath onto her, like as if to say, look, my breath smells nice as well. And so when she stands in front of him, shakes her hand, bows, knocks her out, and she falls onto the floor because he's gone through all these preparations uh, in there as well. So he's, he's, he's made it very complicated in his preparation uh, to meet this very special person. I wonder if we kind of do the same. Maybe we don't uh, check our handshake and our bow and our breath, but maybe we do. Maybe we do. Have a think back to some time past, or maybe it was fairly recent, that you met that special someone in your life or that specific person that you've been planning to meet for a while. I'm going to take you back a little bit to when I first uh, went out with Susan. So I was, I'd already met her at this time, but I finally asked her out in a way that was kind of confusing uh, for, for her because she just said, why don't you just ask me? I said, well, if I was to ask you out, what would you say? And she responded with, well, you'd have to ask me. <laughs> was like, that doesn't help. It doesn't give me the answer that I need. But anyway, so preparing to, to go out on a first date. Now, I, didn't, I hadn't gone out with many people by that point, and so first dates were a bit of a rare thing. So I'm thinking, what do we do? What do, what do we do? Oh, great, she barracks for St Kilda. And at that point in time, I don't know if you remember back, it's about year 2000, I think it was, um, that the Bulldogs and St Kilda played each other at what is now Marvel Stadium in the, in the city there, and tickets were free. I don't know why. I don't know why. They, they just decided that they needed to generate a crowd for these two clubs. I, I don't know, but the tickets were free. I said, you beauty, she barracks for St Kilda. We're going out. It's the same night. I'm going to take her to the footy because she liked, she liked the footy, and it's free. How good is that? <laughs> so I got tickets. So she does remind me of the fact that we, our first date, you know, I didn't pay for, for a ticket <laughs> to go out. But that, that was the preparation that I put into place. I said, oh, beautiful. I got tickets to footy. I love footy. It's free. And I'm going out with someone. How good is that? We sat there. It was on level two. It was great seats as well. And it was free. So then we went from there. Um, oh, actually, before that, to, met, to finally meet her, it was bucketing down with rain as well, absolutely pouring. And I decided to drive into the city at that point in time, bad preparation, because rain and city and traffic means that you are late. So I was very late to picking her up, uh, to meeting her in the city there. So I finally parked my car, not sure if I parked it legally, but I didn't get a ticket, so that's okay. So I didn't prepare for that side of things, but I prepared the tickets, they were free. Finished the, finished the footy, and we sort of going, well, 90s but young, we are, you know, I was 19, she was 22 or thereabouts at, at the time. And um, we're still at the rest of the night. It was 10.30. Crikey, we don't need to go to bed. So we went and saw a movie. We, we actually booked to see a movie at midnight. We've never done it ever since because I tell you what, we've, oh, we'd probably fall asleep during that movie. But that was, that was unfair. That just happened. So all of these preparations, I was so nervous beforehand, but the, the, the date ended up really, really good. But I probably didn't put the preparation into it that perhaps I should have, or I just put in enough that just said, let's just roll along with it. So we, we have these experiences where we can put, we can over-prepare like Mr Bean and things can go horribly wrong, or we can prepare just enough and sort of go, well, let's leave the rest up to whatever happens and let's just roll with it as we go along. So I've, I've looked at today and, and titled it Preparing to Meet Jesus. Now, I don't want this to be looked at it in a way that sort of says uh, preparing to meet Jesus when I pass and go to heaven. I'm talking about preparing to meet Jesus in the paths that we walk along. And so we're going to take a look at three people uh, through the book of Luke, chapter 2. Uh, and these three people are Simeon, Anna, and Jesus. And before we commence, I'm just going to pray. Father God, since we are justified through faith, we have peace through our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your spirit. And I ask that you will teach us here 
this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. So in light of sort of last week, uh, I've taken into this week and looking at a few characters and a few uh, uh, portions and verses of the Bible that we may not look at quite as much or you might pass over a little bit. And it's interesting to look at some of these verses and, and sort of see their significance in what happens next, which are the stories that we know of really, really well. So we're going to look at, um, look at these three. So Simeon, Anna and Jesus. Jesus and his family had journeyed towards uh, to Jerusalem. Um, obviously, this is just after the birth of Christ and he's, he's grown up a little bit. So he's a, he's a young boy. And his parents are going to the temples to present him there, as was custom, and have him circumcised and for Mary and Joseph to, to fulfill the law of the Lord, which was the custom at the time. We meet Simeon. Um, from my understanding, we're a lot different to the one, the Simeon from the Old Testament, who generally wasn't a very nice man at, at some point, as, at some points as well. And, uh, and Anna, two people placed along the path of Jesus uh, that have a genuine impact on him. And on the flip side, two people whom were travelling a path that was years in the following of this path and finally come into contact with Jesus. To me, if you, if you think about this story, it kind of reminds me of an upside down why, because you've got these two paths that are, that are being followed here and they're leading to a particular point and then Jesus goes off in that one direction as well. So keep that in mind as we, as we read from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 21 to 40. And you guys can just listen away if you, if you like. If you have your Bibles here, you can turn to it. Guys at home, you can, you can do the same. So we're going to look at Luke, chapter 2, 21 to 40. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time came of their purification according to the law of Moses had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was a righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consol consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him, what the customer of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against. So that the, right, the, the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher, she was very old and she had lived with her husband seven years after her, mar after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong. 
He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. Here's that moment captured in some 20 verses that directs us into what was to follow in a way that helps us personally connect. Because if we're to follow a path, then we need to be aware of the occurrences that shape us and allow us to progress. Following these verses, Jesus is is present by himself in the temple and interacts with the teachers. Then further along, he is baptised. So they come to the temple. Jesus is presented. Two people find him in, in the path. And they've been, they've been waiting for this moment. They didn't know what it was look, what it looked like, like they probably imagined. But it was just so clear to them when Jesus was presented that this was the one they were waiting for. And so you can kind of picture those times where you've been to um, infant dedications or baptisms and those sort of things that we, we go to these, these sort of events and know who the child is that's getting dedicated or baptised because we know the family and we sort of go, well, that's the family, so that must be the baby, unless they're holding the wrong baby and then, oh, <laughs> then you're really in trouble. But it's kind of that moment. It, it sort of puts us in and connects us personally with that because these two people have been waiting for this moment for a very, very long time. And so with that dedication, we see that Mary and Joseph are astounded. They marveled at the words of uh, of these two people, Simeon and Anna. They they still, whilst they uh, had the the visions of the the angel telling them what the the child that was to be born to them was going to be the Christ, they, they kind of understood it. But this was still a bit like, whoa, this is huge what's going on here. This is this is massive. And so then from that point after he is, uh, he's, he's dedicated and circumcised and, and presented in the, the way that was custom and these two people have uh, blessed him and his family, they, they go back to where they live. But then the, the passages that follow, if you read on, the passages that follow are the events of the Passover, they go back to the temple, they, they, uh, the family, um, his parents, they, they uh, experience Passover and then thinking that Jesus is in tow behind them, they leave again. But he's not. He's back in the temple. So they get halfway their journey. They realise, where's the child? As we've all done, I'm sure, don't lie, you've done it, you've, you've left a child behind. They go back and they rush and they see Jesus. Well, what are you doing here? And they go, didn't you know? He goes, didn't, I, didn't you know where I'd be? Right here. Don't you remember what happened before when you brought me to this place? This is, where I, this, is, this is where I need to be. People are waiting for these moments. So he experiences that moment and then goes and, and, be, and is there by himself listening and hearing the teaching that's what, the, of what's going on. This is Jesus. This is the Christ experiencing people along the way that are shaping and moulding him as the human, the connection that we have with him. He's, he's learning and growing and being impacted on by others around him. So we too can acknowledge that. So let's have a quick look at these, these three people. So Simeon. Simeon sort of just comes out of, out of nowhere into these. There's a man named Simeon sitting there. So we look at verses 25 to 27. This is where he has been preparing himself for this interaction. He knows that, uh, that God is preparing him to meet the Christ. So in verses 25 to 27, we see this. Now there's a man named Simeon in Jerusalem named called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He devoted his life to following God. He, he, would, he, he was there, he was learning, and he was, he was hearing from God in so many different moments. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. This consolation of Israel is the comfort Messiah, the, the comfort the Messiah would bring to his people. Obviously, very well versed in the scriptures that that had gone before, saying that the the Messiah would come to be the the redemption of Israel or the redemption of his people, God's people. And the Holy Spirit was 
upon him. Now, this Holy Spirit that's referenced here is the Holy Spirit that comes up through the, throughout the Old Testament. It's a Holy Spirit that uh, in these references, uh, it talks about coming upon somebody or being revealed to someone in a sense that was very sporadic and often in specific circumstances. We see that the Holy Spirit was revealed or the Holy Spirit comes upon people to help them to identify specific things that God is trying to teach them. And this is the Holy Spirit referenced here for Simeon. The New Testament Holy Spirit, which comes later, which is then uh, revealed to the disciples, is the, um, the permanent revealed Holy Spirit, which is dwelling within. So it still reveals to people, but it's that Holy Spirit within and dwelling in people. That's the following of Christ that comes along and the received Holy Spirit. So here he is, moved by the Holy Spirit, he went into the temple court. So he's sort of gone, he's, you can imagine he's sitting in a specific spot, people around and he goes, no, I think it's time to get up and move. So he walks into a different spot. He walks over. And when his parents brought Jesus into the temple, Simeon takes him into his arms and prays God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you dismiss your servant in peace. So here he is, an old, old man. This is the stuff that I've, this is the moment that I've been waiting so long for. And now that I've experienced and I've fulfilled what you wanted me to do, you can dismiss your servant in peace because I've completed what you've asked me to do along my path. See, that's one point that's, that's getting to you. Jesus has gone from the, on the Y point, heading into this section where he meets Simeon Anna. Simeon's hit that point now. And then we see Anna does the same thing. So Anna, there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel. So she was 84 at that point in time. She'd been married, been widowed. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day. She knew what she was there to do. She'd experienced life and she'd followed God. She was now in a place where she worshipped and praised night and day because God said, there is somebody I need you to meet. There is somebody that I need you to encounter. So remain in this place. She never wavered from this. And then she came up to them. And that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Israel. Now, you've got to imagine at some point, his parents are kind of uh, freaking out a little bit. Because if you've ever dedicated your children, you've been there somewhere, you've got them in your arms, and then somebody you don't know comes up and then just takes your child from you. So, you know, this is a bit strange. Do I want you to take... This is where this is this is God preparing them to say, well, this is I'm taking you to the temple and you're going to experience this baby that has been born to you. It's not your average baby. This is the Christ. And I want to reveal that to you through these particular people. And as a result of all of this. From Simeon and Anna, Jesus prepares himself. The child grew as a result and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. This moment was the, the handing over, I guess, of Christ to what God had planned for him to do. This sovereign moment. Jesus was now ready to learn and to grow even more because the grace of God was with him. So how do we prepare ourselves? How do we prepare ourselves to meet Jesus along the path? How do we prepare ourselves for this, the moments that we are waiting for, the experiences we are aiming for, whether it's a a, a a moment of, of um, achievement in studies and a degree that we're trying to get to. We've got our year 12s. How are they preparing themselves? What, what's at the end? What do they want to achieve?
from all that they are doing and have been preparing themselves along this path? And how do we prepare to meet Jesus along that path, to trust in him, to give us the strength to be able to achieve what we need to achieve? So I'm a very simplistic person, so I've done this very simplistic, simplistically because it's sometimes it's hard to identify specific moments and it's handy to take a bit of a broad brush approach to these sort of things and go, well, how do I prepare myself to meet Jesus? So if we're journeying along the path, how do we prepare? So if we wake up, don't we? Let's, let's start our day. We wake up. Get out of bed. You, you sort of, or, well, you haven't get out of bed at this point in time. You just wake up, okay? Refreshed, if you're going to wake up refreshed, means that you've got enough rest. We've, uh, I've just done a little bit of a course to try and um, improve some, some habits of healthiness. And one of those things that comes up is that you need to make sure you get seven to eight hours of sleep per night because your body needs it and it replenishes itself and you wake up better. Oh, I thought, is that why I'm feeling so bad when I wake up in the morning? Because I'm going to bed at that 11, 30, 12 o'clock and wake up at six. So that, that's, that could be a reason. So I pegged it back a little bit. So I've got a little, little bit more sleep. So you feel a little bit more refreshed. It's not rocket science, but it kind of needed to be for me. But you wake up refreshed. So let's have a look. Two, two verses, Acts chapter 9, 21. Acts chapter 9, 21. Oops, let's go back, back a little bit here. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. Pretty morbid when it comes to waking up in the morning, but if you have scales on your eyes when you wake up in the morning, which, you know, sometimes you wipe them and you go, what is this stuff that's in my eyes? It's all the, the filth and the dust that's gone, gone through there. But you do, you need to wipe your eyes in the morning. You wake up and you try and get some focus. You wipe it all out of your eyes and then, oh, voila, I'm awake. I'm sort of, I can see things again. Yeah? So that's when we wake up. Now, another verse there is Psalm 68, verse 9 which says, you give abundant uh, showers, O God, you refresh your weary inheritance. So we're going from, from um, <laughs> waking up to a little bit of a shower. Yeah? So that next leads us to the next point. We wake up and we clean up. We shower. We brush your teeth. We brush our teeth, hopefully. Otherwise, you're like Mr. Bean and you're checking your breath when you're meeting someone and you, well, our masks are a really good Someone told me the other day it's been a really good thing for our personal hygiene of our breath because we have to smell our own breath when we've got our mask on. And I tell you what, when I started, whew, I need to brush my teeth a little bit longer. But anyway, we clean up, we shower, brush our teeth, we cleanse ourselves. Uh, if we look at Ezekiel 36, 25, I'm going to jump around a little bit here, but these are verses we can put up uh, later on as well. But Ezekiel 30, 36, 25, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. We wake up, we clean up. The next one I'm going to link a little bit here because um, it's, it goes intertwined. So when we've woken up, we've cleaned up, we don't immediately go out into the world, do we? Because we've forgotten something. And everyone will be shocked at what they see if you don't do this particular part. And that's get ready. We get dressed. We prepare our outside for what, the, what people that we interact are going to see. Now, I've got to be careful here because if we focus too much on the getting ready side of things, if we focus too much on what people are going to see on the outside, we forget and neglect what's inside. So that's why I wanted to link these two things together. And that's getting ready and get fed. So you get dressed, you head into the kitchen generally, and you get yourself some breakfast. So the verse that I've, uh, I've put to this is from Luke 16, 15. Whoop, back this way. I was already there. So I'm actually going to start at 14. Pharisees who loved money heard all this and were sneering at Jesus. He said to them, 
You are the ones who justify yourself in the eyes of men, but God knows your hearts. What is highly valued among men is detestable in God's sight. We as humans, uh, we're worried about what's inside because as Christ followers, we need to, God's looking at our heart, not looking at our outside. But if we're realistic as people, we worry about what's on the outside as well. We worry about what people are seeing on the outside. What are we projecting to people? And if, if as a church, we're, we're serious about it, we get our hearts fed, we get our hearts strong, what's inside is safe and secure and based in the foundations of what we believe, that's what's most important. But then what does the public see? What do they see? So for us as a church, I'm hoping, and, and to be able to do this more in the future, but I'm hoping right now people see hospitality. They see welcome. They see an inviting space. They see uh, projection out on Facebook. They see projection on the website. They see our, uh, our op shop, our garden. We harp on it a lot, but that's what people see on the outside. So that's us getting ready. But also... A Sunday morning, our Bible studies during the week, our prayer times during the week, our own individual walk with God is how we get fed on the inside. So that's why this, they're kind of linked. If we don't get ready and then get fed, we're not ready to then. And the fifth and final one is get moving. Leave your place of comfort and start the journey. If we forget any of the two beforehand, well, then we're not ready to get moving because if we don't get fed, we get told so much breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It is. Come on, it is. We've got to make sure that we get fed properly. Otherwise, by 10 o'clock, we're craving, I don't know, burger and chips, which is kind of not what we should be having at that point in time. So if we're not fed spiritually, what are we looking for? We're looking for... We're looking for things that are going to satisfy us, you know, temporarily. We don't get fed properly beforehand. And if we don't get ready, if we don't get dressed, well, we make it out the door. We might make it to the car. May not make it that much further without the, the, uh, the gentlemen and ladies in blue walking up to us and saying, hey, you're not dressed, so can you go and uh, get yourself proper, please? We get moving. We leave the place of comfort and start the journey. There's many instances of this within the Old Testament of people leaving their place of comfort and starting the journey. I've taken Exodus 33, verse 1. It says, Then the Lord says to Moses, Leave this place, you and the people you brought up out of Egypt, and go up to the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to you and your descendants. There's many sort of points in that, but where to get out of our place of comfort. Sometimes it's good to stay at home all day because it gives you a bit of rest, so you get to, to have that refreshment, you sort of go around in a bit of a loop, you wake up, you clean up, you get ready, you get fed, and then maybe you don't go anywhere because you need a little bit of rest and you stay there for that point in time. But if we're going to meet anybody and specifically meet Jesus along the path, then we need to get moving. So we leave that place. I just wanted to think about this as we close. The words that Simeon says in there after he's been through his whole life and then finally encountered Jesus, he says, Lord, now dismiss your servant in peace. What would you like to happen in your life so that you could say, when all is said and done, Lord, now dismiss your servant in peace. You've allowed me to achieve everything that you wanted me to achieve. I've walked the path that you want me to walk. Now dismiss me in peace. How are you preparing yourself to meet Jesus every day? How are you preparing yourself to meet him along life's path? 
How are you, you preparing yourself to be able to say, Lord, now dismiss your servant in peace? Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that you walk or you've laid out a path for us. We thank you that not only have you laid it out, you've walked it, and not only have you walked it, you walk with us on that journey as well. And if we end up straying from that path, you let us know, no, this is the way I intended for you to walk. I ask that you will prepare us as a church to meet you along the path that you've laid out for us. And individually, I ask that you'll prepare us to meet you so that we can say along life's journeys, whether it's at many points along our path, okay, Lord, dismiss your servant now in peace and allow me to focus on the next thing that you have for me. Thank you for all that you are and all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Ready to finish up? Oh, okay. I can finish. <laughs> so we're going to finish up uh, this morning singing the song. I just want you need you to do the words up the back there because there's no one sitting there. Well, I was sitting back there. I can turn the screen around, but you know, you know where it is. You've been here before. We're going to sing uh, our last song for this morning, and that is For the Cause. So let's uh, stand. You can stand at home if you need to stand as well. You can stand. Yeah, that's it, Danny. Go for it. Alan's gone off to get you a cup of coffee. So there you go. <laughs> yes, you have, Alan. <laughs> All right, let's sing together. Simi and then Anna were at the end of their journey as they 
followed the cause. We are still on our journey. So may God give us grace and courage because we need that as we continue to follow the sun into this week, into the next months. Go in peace. Thank you.